In this lesson, I am going to talk about solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Let us recall that the square of a binomial a plus b is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. What is this saying? If you have the square of a binomial, you get the square of the first term. You get the square of the last term. And don't forget that you always have a middle term. And that middle term is twice the product of this two. Moreover, the sign over here is determined by this sign over here. If this is plus, this is going to be plus, and if this is minus, this is going to be minus as well. Suppose that I let my e to be x, then I have b. How do we get the square of that? Square the first term, square the last term, and you have a middle term, which is 2 times bx. This is how a perfect square looks like. The coefficient is of the form 2b, and the constant is the square of b. What is an implication of that? If your 2b here is your coefficient, what is now your constant? b is 2b divided by 2, correct? So that is the coefficient divided by 2, and then you square that. Hence, a perfect square looks like this. x squared plus coefficient of x plus coefficient of x divided by 2, and then square. Let us see how this works in our examples. Suppose I have x squared minus 3x minus 5. The first thing that you have to do is to first isolate your constant. I will put it here on this side. And then, from what we discussed earlier, to make this a perfect square, I will add coefficient divided by 2 and then square. This is equal to, I'm going to copy 5, but since you added 3 over 2 squared here, you also have to add the same thing on the right-hand side. This is the addition property of equality, right? So remember that for equalities, whatever you do on one side, you should also do it on the other side. Next, we now write it as a perfect square. This is simply your x. And then copy this one, your 3 over 2. That's why I just wrote it as 3 over 2 squared and not 9 over 4. So that when you write it as a perfect square, you will just copy this. What is the sign here in between? It's going to be minus because you have a minus here. This is equal to 5 plus 9 over 4. Let me just write that again x minus 3 halves squared is equal to LCM of 4. This is 20 plus 9. You have 29 over 4 is equal to x minus 3 halves squared. From our square root property, we get rid of the square here by getting the square root of both sides, but don't forget to get plus or minus square root. Square root of 29 over 4 is square root of 29 over 2. Correct? And since we are solving for x, I will now put this on the other side. We have x is equal to 3 halves plus or minus square root of 29 over 2. Or if you want, you can also write it as since you have the same denominator over here, you can put them into one denominator. This is 3 plus or minus square root of 29 over 2. Another example, we have x times quantity x plus 4 is equal to 221. We want to have an x squared term, correct? So what do we need to do? We have to distribute it first. We have x squared plus 4x is equal to 221. My constant term is already isolated on one side, so I can keep it that way. 
What's the next step? We now add the constant to make it a perfect square. And what is that constant? You add, get the coefficient, 4 divided by 2, and then you square. Copy this, 221. Add again this term over here. I will just write it as 4 over 2 squared, so that is 4. This is now the square of what? I have x. What is the sign? You have plus here. Remember that you only put the thing inside your square. 4 divided by 2 is 2. It's going to be 225. By the square root property, we have x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus square root of 225. And what is the square root of 225? That is equal to 15. So we have plus or minus 15. So our x is I'm going to transpose 2, negative 2, plus or minus 15. So we have that x is equal to, for the first one, negative 2 plus 15 is 13. For the minus, we have negative 2 minus 15. That is negative 17. These two are your solutions to this equation. For our next example, we have negative x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. Again, the first step is to isolate your constant. But take note here that you have a coefficient of negative 1 for our x squared. Recall that in completing the squares, we want to achieve something like this. x squared plus coefficient of x plus coefficient divided by 2 squared. You want your coefficient of x squared to be always equal to 1. Since I have negative 1 over here, I want it to be positive 1. So I will multiply both sides by negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1. We now have x squared minus x is equal to negative 1. Now we have the proper form. I am now ready to add my constant. What constant am I going to add? Remember that the constant is always plus. Get the coefficient of x, which in this case is 1, divided by 2. And then square. Also plus. This is now x. You have minus here. Copy one half. This is negative one plus the square of one half is one fourth. Negative one plus one fourth is negative three fourths. What can you notice here, class? You are saying that the square of x minus 1 half is equal to a negative number. So if that is the case, we say that you have no real solution. You can stop there. But if I am asking for all solutions, including imaginary solutions, you can now proceed. So if we include imaginary solutions, we still have x minus 1 half is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 3 fourths. Recall that if you have square root of a negative number, this negative here, it goes outside and it becomes i. Correct? So let me erase that and I will put an i here. I will continue it here. x minus 1 half is equal to plus or minus i times Square root of 3 over 4 is square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, we have x is equal to transpose negative 1 half. It will become 1 half. And again, you can combine them into a single denominator. 1 plus or minus i squared of 3. Those are the imaginary solutions. For our last example, we have 2x squared minus 6x plus 5. Again, first step is to always isolate your constant. What can you observe here, class? The coefficient of x squared is not 1. It is 2. We do not want that. 
correct because again the form is x squared plus coefficient of x plus coefficient divided by 2 squared. How do we get rid of this 2 over here? We can divide both sides by 2 so that the coefficient of x squared will be 1. We now have x squared minus 6x divided by 2 is 3x is equal to negative 5 over 2. And then what will we add? To both sides of the equation, we're going to add, copy the coefficient, divided by 2, and then square. Same thing over here. And therefore, this left-hand side is the square of, copy x, this is minus, and then copy 3 over, this is negative 5 halves plus, Square of 3 halves is 9 fourths. That LCM is 4, so I have negative 10 plus 9. So it's negative 1 fourth. If I am just asking for the real solutions, you can stop here and you say that we have no real solutions because... The square of a number cannot be equal to a negative number. But if I ask you to get all solutions, including the imaginary ones, you can proceed. Let us proceed if we will look for the imaginary solutions. We get the square root of both sides, plus or minus, to get rid of this 2 over here. Let me continue it here. I have x minus 3 halves is equal to plus or minus i times 1 half, correct? You have a negative inside your square root, so you pull it out, it will become i, and then you're left with square root of 1 fourth, which is equal to 1 half. Solving for x, we have 3 halves plus or minus i over 2, or you can also write it as 2, 3, plus or minus i. That is your solution.